I went to work then at Douglas, and I'm a draftsman for two weeks, and uh, my chief, uh, section chief, uh, started through my background. And uh, of course, it says all of this stuff that I had done in the Navy. So he puts me in this think tank, and there's where we get to the first think tank, okay? It's inside of Douglas in a walled off area, and there's 200 guys in it, and uh, we investigate every aspect of extraterrestrial, military, commercial, whatever. And I was assigned to design for the Navy about 16, 18 different classes of U.S. Navy battle group ships, which didn't exist. And uh, these were, the larger ones were from one kilometer to six kilometer. These ships fly in space. They're spacecraft carriers. I designed U.S. Navy spacecraft carriers, which finally got built um, back in the late 70s uh, up in Utah underneath the ground. And uh, that's the, you've seen the pictures of U.S. Navy spaceships, Solar Warden. So Solar Warden came out of a think tank inside of engineering at Douglas. And uh, a whole lot of other stuff came out. All right, this is David Wilcock, and you are watching Cosmic Disclosure. I'm here with Corey Good, and in today's presentation, we have a bombshell for you. We're going to be interviewing the veteran insider of the secret space program, William Tompkins. I've had numerous conversations with him. He's actually 94 years old. He's still with us. And his testimony is unbelievable. It validates so many aspects of what Corey and other insiders I've spoken to have been saying. People tell us, oh, you have no proof, you have no evidence. Well, here's a guy who comes out of the World War II era, and his testimony is just going to rock your world. I want to give you a little background, biographical information on him to set this up. So check this out. William was first noticed by the United States Navy when he was just a young boy. He was living near Long Beach, California at the time, and his father would take William and his brother down every weekend to see many naval ships that were parked in the harbor there at Long Beach. William Tompkins was a good artist, and he was really good at building models. And soon, he started creating scale models of the ships he was visiting. The Navy began taking notice of this brilliant young boy and his models because they were so close to the real thing. But it was when young Bill Tompkins began adding top secret parts to these model ships that the higher brass took real notice of him. He was then taken into the Navy and was brought into a think tank during World War II. After the war, he went to work for Douglas Aircraft, which is now the defense contractor McDonnell Douglas. If you want more information on William Tompkins' fascinating background, I encourage you to go to the biographical introduction on William Tompkins that we have here on Gaia. William Tompkins became part of a secret think tank that began to design the ships, the craft, the buildings, and everything they would need for the secret space program. But we want this to start out with a bang. So we're going to begin by joining William Tompkins as he tells us of his many decades long journey through the secret space program. He's going to start out our conversation by telling us how the U.S. Navy began discovering some of the things that the Germans had been inventing since the early 20th century. It's 42, 1942. The war's on. Rickabata, his hobby is sending these Navy operatives into Germany. They've been going all over Germany, and they're staggered at what they found. They found that Hitler and the SS made an agreement with reptilian extraterrestrials. They found hundreds of different types of advanced weapons being built. These included 60 foot and 250 foot, 500 foot UFOs, round vehicles. Okay, UFOs. Um, they built some of these out of chromoly steel that would weigh tons and tons and tons. They had developed, or they had been given, 
electromagnetic anti-gravitational propulsion by the reptilians. The agreement turned out that they were to develop a parallel space navy that the reptilians had and operate out through the galaxy with the reptilians taking over planets and slaving the people on the planets. But what they had already accomplished was really strange. Uh, they have all these UFOs, different types of propulsion that were unbelievable, uh, laser weapon systems, uh, unbelievable stuff. All over the country, Germany and the occupied areas, they had massive underground production facilities that they were using, uh, they had developed for regular uh, arms waste like tanks and places to build uh, navy ships and all this kind of stuff. Most of it was underground. So they started expanding those facilities and they put 11 of these UFO shape vehicles in production. So the operatives are trying to explain to us and the Admiral would back off and say, slow down, I don't believe you. And that went on, and then the captains would say the same thing. The operatives were nice guys, and they knew they were going to get the questions when they got back into the admiral's office, and they knew that nobody was going to believe what they said. So fortunately, the admiral had a typist in there, and the admiral's aide was not in there. He wasn't even cleared to be in there. And one or two of the captains, the admiral and myself, and we were the ones, the only people that this information was given to uh, by the operatives. I, I want to step sort of back to my job in the Navy there working for Admiral Riccobata. We talked about uh, my mission, not my job, my mission. It's documented, okay? It's written by the Secretary of Navy Forrestal, okay, who became the number one guy in the military. Then he, like several other people, including our president at that time, were talking to a lot of other people. And so he was supposed to have had a mental breakdown, so they took him to the hospital there in Washington, at okay. the top floor, and uh, pushed him out the window. And so that's the guy that wrote Admiral Riccobata's mission which has been my mission came from his. That was the level of this information uh, in the United States. Now, no other country but Germany knew about the extraterrestrials. Nobody did. Now, as this start to unveil the reality of what Germany was doing, it was like uh, the war is going to be over, period. They're going to take the whole planet, and uh, they could do it in five minutes. They even had trained a group of soldiers, an entire battalion of them, who were cloned. They had cloned a whole battle group of soldiers. They sent them out front, and they were killing the Russians unbelievably. So it's not just the material, but the, uh, and advanced medical systems, longer lives. The size and the magnitude of what was taking place was unbelievable to everybody that got involved in the program. The SS found out that people could live longer. So there was another big massive program given in pieces, brought back by the Navy operatives, plopped it on the table uh, in front of Admiral Riccobata and of course, that ended up with about 24 packages because of the different magnitudes of, of living longer. And I guess if you ask the question for the Nordics, their comparable lifespans are 1,400 to 2,200 years. But they look exactly like us. There is a study that we did later on at TRW uh, on advanced life systems as extended life. And that program is down now to within less than two years. 
it's going to be available to some people on this planet. And the way it works, I'm, I'm, I'm very involved with it. Uh, essentially, you take four aspirin over six months, pop them, or you get four shots. You immediately change. Everything is nicer. Everything is nicer, okay? What you do is you revert back to the girls 21 and the guys 29. Now, it takes a while for you to do this. You then uh, stay at that uh, time for essentially a couple of thousand years. Your brain then, which collectively we're only using 2.2% of our brain, I don't care what they're telling us, we're only using 2.2%. Uh, you get a minimum of 400% capability over what you normally had. And now, what this does is, this allows you to contribute, allows you to contribute. You go to work for the company here, 20 years, they give you the watch, and you got a couple of three years later on, and you're out of, out of the picture. Okay, so you didn't, you didn't contribute very long, all right? Now, you're living 2,000 years, and you can contribute, and you also can have fun for 2,000 years. And you don't change age. You stay there. Five of the top medical research groups, just like Scripps right here in San Diego, are involved in this. And there's hundreds of companies involved in this. There's a whole lot out there that is being removed from our part of our life. And that we are in this position where everything that we've been taught, whether it's in the university or in medical or in any technical field, even mathematics, is baloney. Yet, because we have allowed reptilians to put the stuff in our minds that removes our capability to operate, learn, our entire history, all the way back thousands of years, has been being controlled. We now know this. This is not something that we think could happen. We now know this. So if you look at countries, you look at the Roman times, and you see, if you, if you take and parallel these events back with that, the Romans were being mind controlled. They had the elite group, and then they had all of the army, and then they had the, the, the slaves. And that's where we are now. We're just finding out about this, and we need to fix it.